beautiful divine path that God and the universe has laid out for us already. Okay, so let's move on. Bring the peace. Coming from a place of peace is the most beautiful place to come from because with peace, people don't understand, also comes love. Okay, so, so let's go into what is an aura. And you know, since ancient times, we have seen pictures and paintings of different spiritual leaders across various traditions. And one thing they have in common, they have this like halo around their heads. So my question is, what did these painters and artists know that most people didn't know? I mean, they were putting halos on people's you know, leaders, you know, before all of this mysticism. So the artists, you know, they have this extra sensory that they bring out through their art and they were seeing the auras. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 3 in the Bible, there's a quote that says, those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. And those who lead the many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. So we glow when we are doing these beautiful things and, and people feel it. All living things, people, plants, animals, are made up of complex combination of atoms, molecules, and energy cells. And these elements coexist. They generate a large magnetic field that can be sensed, felt, and even seen around the physical body. This Energy has many characteristics such as color and shape, and these characteristics are what we call the aura. Much of what you feel, like when you're meeting someone for the first time or people that you already know, that's kind of what you're feeling even before you come in contact with them. You're feeling that energy field. You're feeling their aura. Sometimes we even use auras to describe people. I mean, have you heard anybody say like, oh man, he's got an aura about him. Or, you know, oh, her aura glowed. And it's just, you know, you might think, oh, they're just saying it, but it's because they're feeling it, so they're expressing what they're feeling. The aura can provide insight into the spiritual, emotional, and physical aspects of individuals. So for thousands of years, the knowledge and acceptance of auras has existed in religious around the world, from Buddhist priests to Native American shamans. Today, there's a resurgence of these ancient beliefs, due in part to a turning towards a more natural way of life. Many people are looking for new and less intrusive ways to caring for the health of their mind and body. People have become dissatisfied with the high cost of the medical situation and healthcare. And also, they're also dissatisfied with the fact that, you know, this over-dependence on medical, you know, medicine or chemical drugs. They really want to go back to more natural ways of taking care of themselves. And they don't want to be addicted to the chemicals that doctors give us. Since the early 1980s, there has emerged an increase in awareness of the self and understanding of how mind, body, and spirit connection determines good or bad health. For this and other reasons, many leaders and healers are turning towards aura reading as a means of using to diagnose the whole person. I would like to move now into the recent history about auras. Traditional science had issues about the existence of the energy field around humans and they had this reason because they couldn't prove it. And that's what science wants to do. They either want to prove something or disprove it. So because they couldn't prove it, they really weren't, you know, diving into it. And it's like, yeah, that's, you know, we can't even prove it exists. Now listen to this. In 1939, two Russians, Simeon and Valentina Kurlian, accidentally captured the aura on film. And they began doing serious research into the auric field and how it pertains to the physical body. It was not until the 1970s that Curlian photography made its way to the United States. Maybe some of you have heard of it, or maybe some of you have actually gone to take pictures of your auras. And that's what you're, they're using, Curlian technology. But, you know, I'm going to go into a little bit further. There's a lot of interesting stuff that science has come up with. Just because we can't see something, this is kind of the, the thing about science, you know, they don't want to go into things, but just because you can't, you don't see something doesn't mean it, doesn't exist. It only means that we have not moved forward to the technology that allows us to prove these things. So, and this is also the sad state that we find ourselves in where things are getting disproved because of the advancement of technology. So, 
you got to kind of really go with what you feel inside of you. So, and I know that some of you are really sensitive and can feel auras, can see auras. And I say feel and see because we'll talk more about how aura is actually, you know, sensed by the being. Photography uses a high voltage camera, which provides a method for converting the non-electrical properties of an object into electrical properties. And this converted electrical field is captured on film by that high voltage spark that is discharged. Petroleum photography became the first real scientific method of capturing the glow of energy field surrounding a living subject. Until recently, scientists were only interested in proving or disproving the existence of such fields. But now, work is being done by mainstream science to examine auras and to use their signatures to understand people plants and animals. Science Daily, and you can visit their website, the sciencedaily.com, report that a neuropsychological phenomenon known as synesthesia might be a scientific explanation for the ability to see and sense auras. Recently, because I was sharing this topic with my son, and some of you already know that he is studying music theory, and he was telling me that one of his friends actually is diagnosed with synesthesia. And when she hears certain musical notes, she actually sees colors. Curly and is cool, isn't it? Uh, Brianna's asking, what is it called? Photography? Curlian photography. Um, K I R L I A N. Curlian photography. In these sensitive individuals, the brain area responsible for the processing sensory is intensely connected. Professor Gomez Milan explains that these extra connections cause them to automatically establish associations between the brain areas are not normally interconnected. Additionally, new research suggests that many healers that see the aura of people might actually have some form of synesthesia. That study was conducted by the University of Granada Department of Experimental Psychology and was published in 2012 in the Journal of Consciousness and Cognition. This is the first time that a scientific explanation has been provided for the esoteric phenomenon of the aura, which is this radiation of luminous energy that surrounds the person, like the halo. There's also a series of experiments from a team coordinated by Professor Korotkov in St. Petersburg, Russia. He has published over 200 papers in leading journals on physics and biology, and he holds about 17 patents on biophysics inventions. What I also added on here was his scientific line, known as the electrophotonics, is a breakthrough beyond Curlian. And because what it does, it, it now actually captures in real time viewing of the human energy field, real time. This new technology allows you to capture by a special camera the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual energy emanating to and from an individual. Plants, liquids, powders, inanimate objects, and it's translated into its computerized model. This provides incredible implications for the diagnosis and treatment of physical, emotional, mental, spiritual conditions with applications like this in medicine, psychology, sound therapy, biophysics, genetics, forensic science, agriculture, ecology, and they're just, they haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg. Currently, this is an accepted technique and doctors, practitioners, and researchers benefit from using this technology worldwide. Amazing, right? What are the benefits of knowing your aura? And how can the average person use this information to benefit their own lives? Well, first, you don't need a fancy camera to see an aura. And you don't need to study for years as a Buddhist priest or a Native American shaman. So, breathe. Auras can be seen by anyone who spends the time and effort to develop, practice, and study and understand the sense. That's why I was so happy that many of you were so cool about looking and playing with uh, magic eye art that I was um, shared yesterday with the intention so that you can begin to realize how you can kind of do like a bifocal with your eyes and you can really play with your eyes and and it can you know really help you see different dimensions so you all were such a sport and and thank you everyone for for actually participating it was so much fun aura interpretation can also be used to improve your interaction with others by determining the current emotional state of someone you can actually avoid 
a stressful encounter. Also, auras can be affected by the energy people around us. If you're having a conversation with a person who is intimidating you, your aura will tend to shrink and the other person you know, will be pushing on you. And if you're feeling powerful and vibrant, well, your aura is also thick and strong and you will not feel intimidated even by someone that may be intimidating. And the other thing that's really interesting is when you're in love, your aura will reach out to lightly brush against the aura of the, you know, the person you love and they'll combine to create a field around the both of you. So it's pretty beautiful. So now let's look into what it called the anatomy of an aura. An aura is made up of sections of energy. Each section has different vibration and serves as a specific purpose and relates to a particular component of a person's life. These sections are also known as subtle bodies. They reflect different colors. Each layer of color displays a characteristic and each respectively links to our chakra system we talked about that in one of our sessions right and that's a whole thing you know the the subtle body aura chakra connection that's a whole different topic that we can go into if you're interested some other time but it's really deep and lots of fun to continue exploring the size of an aura can vary depending on the subject a human will have a larger aura than a house plant and it can extend between six to 25 feet or even more and that's like all around the body so like even if you're standing it will go down to the earth above around i mean it can expand as you move outwards from the physical body into the auric field each body will vibrate at a slightly faster vibration than the one before it. So the etheric body will vibrate faster than the physical body and then the emotional body will even be faster than the etheric and so on and so on. Because each of these have a different layer of, you know, vibration. Quick overview of the aura subtle body system. The first one is phys the physical subtle body and it, and I'm just going to go uh, just a quick recap so that you can like when you're out there and, and you start practicing, you have like what I'm sharing with you will stay with you and you'll just continue doing more research on your own, but just gives you something to come back to. First one is the physical body and it's the one that has that name because it's the closest to your skin, to your, yeah, to your skin. And consider this one as what you would call the sudden goosebumps and it's like your energy and your hair standing on end energy. So that's kind of that aura field. Then there is the astral body. This is your emotional aura. And think of this one as your good or bad vibe aura field. That's the one that allows you to kind of sense someone else's mood. Then you have the lower body. This is the aura that holds all the mental energy. It's the field that stores your thoughts, ideas, aspirations, and creativity. After that one is your higher body. This is the one with your conscious aura. It connects to the spiritual health and it reflects the state of your higher consciousness. Body holds the energy of your body and the environment and it's connected to your physical health and your well-being. The spiritual body is your celestial aura. It connects you to your intuition and it links you to your psychic or medium channel. This one would be like your spiritual community hotline aura and finally you have your intuitional body or it's also called the catheric body or the catheric aura this is the energy that bonds all of your other energies together and connects them to your soul experience and your life lessons and purpose so as I mentioned these are all actually connected to different chakras and different points in the body so you want to be a field here they are connected to the chakras and then so you begin to kind of get a sensation how everything's weaved to this thing that you can feel there's way more to you <laughs> and I think you know that already have you ever felt there's something off with your energy energy doesn't lie if you feel run down dedicate some time to heal your auric field and with some good vibe uh, just like when we're balancing our chakras you can also realign and cleanse your aura it's very similar way. this is why it's important to cleanse and balance your chakras you think that you're just doing it because oh i feel off but if you don't balance your chakras or they might be excuse me blocked well 
you're also affecting your auric field because now it cannot do what it's supposed to do, which is this amazing thing that it's doing. It's coming in and then it's going out and transiting again and then coming in. So it's, a, it's an intense process. Love to go into more with what happens at that level. When we, we're going to go to that here. So it's a pretty much very similar. The aura cleansing is similar to the way that you would do your chakras. A little variation. But you can smudge the space around you. But it's not as like when you're aligning your chakras. There's a lot of intention and a lot of light work. Who was it that mentioned? I think somebody, what's her name? She mentioned it on here. Nelly. She was talking that she's a pranic healer. So she knows how to work with the light energy. Very similar. You know how sometimes you're moving cobwebs? That's pretty much how you work with auras. Totally different than when you're working with the chakras. Chakras have a spiral in and a spiral out. That's how I balance chakras and I do that when I do it remote and I use my proxy. But very similar, it's that, but there's a kind of a process to that. So you can do that. And then, so in conjunction with your chakras, does that help a little bit there? Go here now. Let's move to this area here. When your chakras are healthy and functioning properly, they act as gateways for the vital life force energy from your subtle bodies. And that way they enter in to the physical body via the meridian. So you see now how you need to have one thing aligned so that you don't block this beautiful energy coming in. So having your chakras balanced is really important and having them also open because you can have an open chakra in reverse. So it's really crazy. So really need to stay on top of that. Yeah, so, so as it's moving out, you have to make sure that also that the lower vibration that pushing out has a way to come out and, and go back out into this aura field because a lot of things happen in the aura. Not only is it energy coming in, but the energy, your lower energies that you're pushing out comes into the space when you have your chakras open and they become transmuted. So understanding that that's where transformation happens and it gets this. There is something about the universe. The universe uses everything. Good to allow the universe do what it wants to do, which is transmute the energy that is no longer of use to us, and then it recycles it. That's, that's what life is all about. It really is amazing. It just blows me away all the time. The physical body is dependent upon the energy flow to maintain optimum well-being. Chakras can become blocked by long-held negative states, rigid thought patterns, negative emotions, toxins, just what happens during everyday life. Sometimes it just happens and you don't, you're not on your toes because you're worrying about bills, you're worrying about relationships, you're worrying about oh, so many things that do come up, work and what have you. So it's not unusual that, you know, we constantly need to have this maintained. It's not just diet, it's not just exercising, it's not just meditating, but it's conscious awareness that we're, have, you know, this awareness of our being, our well-being. So now let's go to the part that you've been waiting for, which is how to read the auras. Exciting! First and foremost, keep in mind, practice. Practice is the key to developing any new skill. Spend at least, you know, I would say, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes a day, you know, practicing. Just, you know, spending a few times in the minutes in the mirror, especially if you've got a back wall, you can do that. Or, you know, if you've got a blank wall, you can use your hands, you know. And we're going to go into that. But don't lose patience. And if you can't do it, you know, daily, then at least set aside three times a week. But make it part of your practice. Because remember, it's like it's like exercising. It's something new that you're trying, and it begins to grow, and and you become prolific at it. You'd be very surprised how quick you pick up on it. Some of you, you are doing it, and you don't even realize. When you perform the exercise, trust your instincts. If you think you see purple around your head, don't second guess yourself. You're seeing purple. You may want a pen and paper handy to record your findings. Write down the time it takes, you know, to perceive the white inner layer and then the mid layers and any other layers that you might see. See, you know, just record your observations, you know, keep a journal. What colors, you know, and where, where did you see the colors? And you may surprise yourself. Over time, you're going to actually be reading auras. After the exercises, also then write down the corresponding colors. And before you know it, also you're gonna, it helps you get good at interpreting the colors as well. So it'll be really simple to do a self diagnosis. The white inner aura is always the first thing you should see when you begin reading auras. And as you progress and you develop your skill, it becomes easier for you to see the other layers. You'll be able to distinguish the layers, you'll be able to distinguish the auras. 
and you'll be able to kind of get a feel of each color as they're, you know, and which location they're in and the different grade of colors. So we're going to go into that also for a little bit before I give you a couple exercises to practice. And just remember, it takes time to develop a sense of energy patterns. So don't get discouraged. If you cannot see them right away, if you don't see colors right away, and if you feel like you have trouble, you know, with that inner white layer, just practice. Practice makes perfect. Just keep trying. And sometimes what I've learned, like for myself in the beginning, for me, it was more of a, a feeling of the color. I was feeling the color. I wasn't seeing the color right away. It was like a feeling. This feels like this. And I trusted my feeling. Before I knew it, I was actually able to see the colors. You know, sometimes it was like, I didn't know if I was seeing the color inside my head or if I was really seeing it out here. And then eventually I could see them, you know, I could see them. It was just like, almost like when you're riding the bicycle, right? And I was like, oh my God, I'm riding! That, that type of excitement. And then it's like all of a sudden your eyes goes back to normal. Like, oh my God, I gotta go start all over again. You start doing that little, you know, weird gaze look. Yes, yeah, so in public and people's like, what's, what's that person staring at me? Creepy. So understand that as you're practice, you know, seeing auras, it's a great way to activate your clairvoyance and your inner eye. Number one, notice energy. And this is really a good way to, a lot of people don't think of it as a way to see auras, but sensing energy is really important and it's a part of intuition before you can fully develop your ability to see auras you must first become aware of how energy feels to you and in your body so the next time that you're with a friend pay attention to how you feel in their presence do they invite you and do you feel loved or do you feel like they're draining your energy from you and align yourself with your breath and ask your inner self to be honest with these sensations of how these feelings are coming through you need to honor your sensations and your reactions. It's really going to be key in helping you develop these extra sensory things. Auras are easier to see from the periphery. So that's number two. We're going to the next part. Auras are easy to see from the periphery. So rarely are we able to see auras because we're just so in our heads. We're not focusing on our vision in that way. We're just you know too busy just processing our no normal five senses hearing walking smelling tasting we're not really delving into these other senses so that's why we're out of practice so to begin seeing auras what you should do is gaze at one spot for 30 seconds maybe a minute or so this little exercise is not so much about the aura but practicing what i call soft gaze I don't know, use without my glasses, but a soft gaze really looks as something like you're breathing and you're telling yourself that you're relaxed and you're just softening everything about you and just allowing the eyes just to rest on that spot. And before you know it, things begin to get a little bit blurred. And that is called soft gazing. So practice that. That's one exercise. It's not even a, if by accident you see an aura, then you need to move forward. And it's like, whoa, what's that? But a soft gaze is really all about that soft, soft relaxed state of being where you just, just look at, don't, don't move around. Don't like hop around. Just focus on looking at one item and just no pressure, I, you know, like, oh, not, this is not about the R, but all about just allowing this hazy, soft, relaxed viewing, soft viewing, I call it. That helps you develop this periphery vision because uh, as you're gazing onto this, there's something also happening here. And allow, kind of observe in your mind about what is out here, okay? Let's go into the next part, which is color. Color. Color will help you hone your ability to read the auras and to expand your sight. So to go into, um, so to, to do that, go into what I would say, uh, not too much activity or a neutral wall and play with bright colored objects. You know, just kind of look at things and just kind of put these bright items in front of you. Close your eyes, breathe, asking kind of your yourself that you are working on seeing the aura of this object and go into that gaze mode that I talked about while you're observing this bright thing it could be red blue but just solid and 
and just look at it and keep gazing until all of a sudden you're going to notice like a shimmering energy around the object. That, my friend, is the aura. That shimmering little thing that you see around it is the aura. And as you get confidence with single colors, the next thing that I would tell you is go get, then start playing with things that are multicolored so that you can, you know, start training your vision to see, you know, things with multiple colors. With that, now we're going to go into self practice. Better you than practicing with someone else, right? So if you're practicing with yourself, um, find your, you know, get yourself into a nice meditative state, you know, and clear your mind and set the intention that you're going to see your aura. If I'm practicing to see my own aura, or anytime that I'm doing any healing work, I love to rub my hands together, get the energy activated and the connections going. So I would just tell you the first thing to do is kind of rub your hands together. And then you could use the full hand, like if you're doing a prayer, or you could just use two fingers. And one of the things that I would just do is, you know, it's like, it could be a little bit higher. Not together, if you notice, like like this, like one in front of the other, sort of. So anyway, so if you want to see your aura, uh, I'm going to give you a little profile here, just kind of. And then pretty much what you're going to do is kind of look. Like It's going to feel like you're kind of cross-eyed as you're looking. And it's kind of slightly, you don't want to kind of put them identical, but just kind of one, maybe a few centimeters lower, like that, up to your nose. And then you kind of, kind of it almost might feel like you're cross-eyed. It, look, it looks like you're going to look cross-eyed. So you go like that, and as you're looking in, and you've got a side view. <laughs> but not only are you um, pulling away, but you're also opening. So as you're doing that, you start pulling away from your nose, and you also start pulling them apart. And as you look, it'll look like your seal sets, right? And the space in between, the, in that space, you're going to see the aura. That, my friend, is your aura. That little glow is your aura. Now one thing that I want you to do is don't mistake in the, like you know sometimes you know when an after image and after you know some people get confused you know like oh you know the closer eyes they that that's not an aura you know like if you blink and you see something that's not an aura. An aura is a kind of wispy kind of smoky you know that you see around the object person plant thing. So it's not the after image things. Just want to make sure that we are clear on that. Um, if you want to read the aura of another person, ask them to stand like two or three feet from you. And also make sure that you use a solid wall behind you or a neutral wall. And as they're standing in front of you, you kind of look at the wall. Um, you don't look at your friend. You look like if you're seeing past them, you know, kind of. And you're going to start like if you use that soft gaze and I know that's like you it's like the other per you know they they gotta love you first of all to do that and let me just tell you my husband I had my husband doing that and I said hey George you know I wanted to see if you could see my aura that man in an instant I'm not like into this all aura viewing but it was just I was blown away and he was seeing colors and I'm like George he goes oh DC I do that all the time I'm like what this is all these you know this is why I say you will never get to know someone, and he knows I've, I've done this for years. We've been married over, what, 25 years? years going six, and 26 years later, he tells me, oh, yeah, you know, I see them all the time. Really? <laughs> I hate to find out what I'm going to find out 50 years, I mean, 25 years from now. Anyway, I love it. It never stops, you know, so love it, love it, love it. So, so as you're looking at the wall that with that soft gaze you're seeing past them like almost as if it was through them around the wall and you'll start seeing that field that little glow around them that is their aura and once you have seen that that and when you see the aura it's time to, to experiment like you should like you know turn turn the radio on find a music they like and see what happens to the aura and what kind of colors will change because I tried that and you'll see different especially when it's stuff they like you know the colors will change so I hope that you have a lot of fun with that I want to share also so now you learn how to see your own aura and then how to play and see the aura for someone else it's really about soft gazing that's why I wanted you to do that magic eye art because with that magic eye art you have to have the image really close and you've got to keep that soft gaze and then you have like that you know that far away look, but it's there in front of you. As you have that far away look and that soft gaze and you're breathing and you set the intention, 
it's like gonna be like a surprise, like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and you get so excited, and then your eyes kind of, you know, so because it's a, it's a thing with your eyes, you are actually activating this sense, and it's awesome. It's it's like when you're activating your listening, like for me, for me, when I'm activating my senses, I just like oh okay, okay, yeah. So it's like I am tuning in to stuff that other people are not listening to. So it's that that sensation. It's like I know I have these other senses. I just kind of okay. You know, just like, okay, let me take a minute. And I go to that tuning. It's the same thing with these other senses. It's no different. I'm working that. And sometimes it feels like it's an inner eye working. Like I was saying, it could be a sensation. Oh my God, I can feel, I can feel your aura. And it feels this and that. And as you continue to work with that, you know, that's why it's, journaling is really important when you're doing all this. This, um, we're going into colors. This is really important just to give you an idea of colors because it's interesting. Life is full of color and like so many other things on your path, color also has meaning. There are representations of messages from your higher self, God, from the angels. But you don't have to be a metaphysician to understand the importance of colors in your life. It exists in everyday situations and experiences. I mean, think about when you're eating a beautiful dish. It's like all those colors and you just, you know, the lettuce is still green and the tomatoes are red and all these other beautiful colors. And you just want to dig in because it's this correlation to this freshness that your body wants. And it's pretty cool. Many people associate the color white with God, pink with love, and purple with royalty and spirituality. But it's also important to remember that color definition is also very personal to each and one of us. So the following color interpretations that I'm going to share with you are the ones that are associated much with chakras and auras. So here we go. When you're doing auras and you're doing chakra, you know, color, when you're working with that color wheel, it works with you'll see the color either dull or vibrant, or you'll see the color consistent or spiked. Those are the two, you'll see the color in those types of grades. They're either spiked coming off spiked or spurts, or they're consistent, or they're dull or vibrant. That's the interpretation that I'm going to share with you. So if you see black, usually, Depending on its intensity, it indicates hatred, negativity, depression, miserly, and usually when you see these colors, they have a tendency of being wispy around the person, not just consistent. Normally, what I've seen is just wispiness about them, but you, if, if you've seen it, it might have been a little bit different. If you see the red, it indicates fear or anger, and a vibrant red, if you're seeing it vibrant and constant, represents fear or a strong anxiety. If it's dull, it represents anger, and the deeper, the stronger emotion. So if it's like more dull, like a dull red, it's just really some serious anger in there. And if it's a consistent red, it, it probably denotes the person has a violent nature to them. Or if you see the red complex, it's just something that they're kind of really passionate about or something that's happening in their life at that moment. The color yellow, if it's a clear yellow, it denotes intelligence, wisdom, and success. And if it's a dull yellow, it normally is jealousy, selfishness, and a negative outlook on what's happening in that situation. If you see light shades of green, it indicates that there's going to be some issues with their health and maybe some injury. So if you know this person, you might want to tell them to, you know, watch their diet or to be careful. There might be some injury up ahead. If it's a darker green, that means that they're recovering from a health issue. The blues usually are spiritual, you know, they're searching spirituality. A vibrant blue is pride, adoration, dedication. If a subject has any shade of the lighter blues, it usually means that they're beginning their spiritual journey and or their spiritual quest. If it's a darker blue, typically indicates people that have found their spiritual path and they're continuing on their on their education. Now, if you see a dull blue, this usually denotes people that are a person that's taking their life for granted, they're not happy, or they're like going down the narrow path, you know, and they're real self-righteous. Usually, you'll see people that are zealous, like religious zealots, 
and or fanatic they have a dull blue about them and this is just because of that self-righteousness and this dedication and their nature so that's kind of what you see with the religious zealots people with lighter shades of purple are refining and polishing their spiritual nature they are actively working on each aspect of their lives you know their personal their spiritual and their professional so they're just really you know in that progress moving forward so you'll see that with that if it's a mid to dark purple, these are usually teachers that have chosen their spiritual path. For the most part, they are patient, they're kind, and they're willing to go out of the way to help people. The white indicates purity or protection. So when you see that white even expanding beyond, that's usually what you'll see. And if you see it in, in different areas of the layers, it's kind of more in that particular... Because sometimes you might see a white layered in between certain areas and that means that part of that remember the color wheel that we're doing they're kind of protected or seeking protection or more protection in what they're pursuing there so it's pretty interesting um we're almost finished my friends pink pink um, indicates love affection a resilient temperament and if it's a dull pink it usually means guilty or pity self-pity orange a vibrant orange indicates ambition pride self-sufficiency it's a dull orange that you see around the person it's a lack of warmth or they have a strong desire for success and popularity so it's like these people pushing forward a lot like that brown the light brown indicates confusion or discouragement the lack of confidence in their self and in the prison situation that they're going through if it's a dark brown it indicates selfishness fault finding and usually they tend to be deceptive so now we're going to Fast forward to just a little trivia. That's pretty much with the colors. I just wanted to share this. I had a conversation with my husband. We were talking about the chakras and we were talking about the auras and how the auras actually go through the dreams, not just the big chakra meridians, but all these other meridians. And he was saying, well, Daisy, have you ever seen how these robotics are put together? And I'm like, well, I really haven't taken the time. And he was showing me, so we were kind of looking at how robotics are being put together and really amazing. And the Japanese have done a lot of advancement in this field. And what the, they do, these electric, they take these, I don't know, they have certain names for these sensor, and they have these sensor points on these machines. And what these sensor points do, basically, that's where they're transmitting and communicating the the commands to the robots and so I was thinking wow how similar to our meridians and, and most of these studies come from the east come from you know these Asian cultures and the Hindu cultures where they talk about all our meridians and this communication process so it's interesting that even as you can see how they put these little sensors on the robots so that they can transmit information and you know move energy so just wanted to leave you with that thought so as usual i like to share my references if you would like to use it, check out which online references i was using you can go to sciencedaily.com that's one website the other website, which a lot of cool stuff, especially about the Russians and how they're using these energy to use real live, real time viewing of the auric field. Go to biofieldglobal.org. Um, amazing stuff that you're going to find there. And as you all know, I do keep my library. I do have a library, so lots of good stuff here. More into different ways of seeing that. The Awakening to Zero Point. And that's from Greg Braden. We've seen a lot of this stuff with him. He shared most, some of his materials on, on our uh, group. The other one, and I, and I love this one. I think I even, Stuart Wilde, The Sixth Sense. And in here he has a, a chapter just called The Etheric Doorway. The Etheric Doorway. And it says here, it is suffice to say that the etheric is the subtle bio-electromagnetic emanation that exudes from the body. In certain subdued lighting, it is visible to the naked eye. You don't see it yet, but you can easily learn to feel it. For years, scientists have said it's not there, but now they're coming around to that idea that it might be there. And just remember, I told you that Sayan Korotkov, he's of our times. This book, I believe its first publishing was, and I mean, I've been following Stuart for quite some time, but he's dead now, but... This was from 
2000. Remember, Curly and Photography was from the 1939s. It came to America in the 1970s. And now the Russians are coming up with even better. So this is brand new. And now it's being proven. And they're using it in agriculture. The other uh, source that I used to help get this material that I gave to you today was from the Kabbalah, Your Path to Inner Freedom. Great book. And amazing book. Little a bitty bitty book. Edgar Casey's Auras, a fantastic book. If you don't know who Edgar Casey is, you should read up some of his stuff. Amazing guy, amazing, amazing, amazing. But this is just a little bitty book I got for $3.50 about 20 years ago. Excellent book, it really goes into color and all that good stuff. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this session again, my friends. I hope to see you back again and have a beautiful, beautiful evening.